Hey fellow explorers, we are 100 kilometers south of Tokyo on the Izu Peninsula. We're gonna be spending the next two days here showing you everything we're doing in the city of Ito, famous for its hot springs, and in the Izu Highland, famous for its nature. All right, let's go. Let's go! All right, our first stop in Ito is Ito Marine Town. So we were driving in from Atami, and this is a big Japanese rest stop. Now, if you're in the US, it's definitely not what you think of when you think of a rest stop. In the US, you think of a rest stop and you think bathrooms and vending machines. This place is quite amazing. It is two stories. It's got a whole bunch of shops and restaurants and clean, nice restrooms on a sunny day. It looks like it'd be a great place to stroll around the harbor. They've also got like harbor tours that are here. Um, really neat to see how Japanese do a rest stop the right way this way. The first floor shops are open till 6 p.m. and then the second story restaurants are open a little later till around 7 or 7.30 p.m. This was really neat. In the rest stop, they had a map of the peninsula and then pictures showing you what the road conditions look like in all of those places. As you can see, it's a rainy day today. All right, I decided to get a drink for the road. The Tokucha, it's like the most expensive, 200 yen. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, and I love Japanese vending machines because they take like bills. You can put like thousand yen coins. They make change. And the ones in Tokyo often take like Suica cards too. Not here because yeah, I think pretty much everybody's driving, not taking the train. So we don't do this often, but uh, we went to the wrong hotel. We booked our hotel at the Kai Ito and there is a Kai Anjin, which is this thing behind me. The front desk staff looked very confused and then asked if I could show them my reservation printout, which I had and they were like, aha, you're at the wrong hotel. That sounds very much the same. So we're gonna go to the correct hotel now. Uh, hopefully it's better than this one. I mean, this one looked nice, but wasn't that great since we were only in the lobby. Do you wanna go to the hotel? Mm-hmm, all right, let's go. The good news is it was only a five minute drive to the other one. All right, let's try check in, number two. All right, at dinner time, we did not book food at the hotel. We don't want to stuff the meal, it's a little too expensive. So we came to the train station here in Ito to look for food. We came to their main shopping street Friday night and Boy, it's hustling and bustling down here. Uh, so we got the princess some bread from the bakery right next door. And we saw one fishbowl restaurant over by the train station. It's actually open. So we're gonna go check that out. So we made it up to the second floor into kind of a semi-private booth into the restaurant. You know, people always ask me, Chris, how do you order in Japanese restaurants in rural Japan without knowing Japanese? And I look for restaurants like this that have picture menus, and then I say I would like this one. And then I say I would like this one. And then I say I would like to drink a biru, and I would also like to drink a mizu. All you do is you push this button, and then you hear the bing bong, and then they come right on over. First dish arrived, this is the sashimi local fish with sesame, 590 yen, so about $6 for this portion. It's kind of like izakaya style, so you order like a bunch of small eats together. Mm. It's good. It's sesame I often equate to peanut tasting, but the sesame seeds and the green onion give it some crunch along with the fresh tasting fish. And we got a bargain price, 300 yen biru. Mm in the world's tiniest glass. So if you just want like a sip of beer uh, in Japan, you can often get beers in this size, which I, I quite like, especially if you're driving afterwards. Cheers. Items two and three arrived. This is a sashimi rice bowl. Um, not as elaborate as the ones we had just yesterday in Atami that had like these mountains of rice. This is some deep fried shrimp that comes with lemon. That looks pretty tasty. I'm gonna dive into one of these. Mmm, good. I often don't like head-on, leg-on shrimp, but this is just fried up so perfectly that it's easy to eat with the whole shell on. And our final food item has arrived, the ebi gyoza, or the shrimp pot stickers, Japanese stuff, served on a really hot platter. 
in a nice little star shape. I like it with some soy sauce that I put on my plate right here. Oh, a hot, a crispy. And Japanese pot stickers, as compared to Chinese pot stickers or gyoza, generally um, smaller, thinner skin and a slightly different taste to them. After dinner, to get our evening snack supplies, we stopped into Mega Don Quixote. This is like a Walmart of Japan, and Mega is a pretty big one. And they've got these awesome little shopping carts that our princess could push around. You having fun with the shopping cart? Yeah. A group of passing Japanese saw her and said, Oh, kawaii! Uh, but you know, this is like not just a supermarket. It's like the everything store. They've got electronics They've got luggage and I mean the setup of the whole place is just crazy insane We could easily spend hours in here, you know But I often find the English translations in Japanese restaurants to be interesting like this here is hotel margarine Hmm, and this is typical Don Quixote like normal slippers and then bread slippers or like croissant slippers <laughs> Look at that. I'll take two Oh, and of course I love their mascot, Don Pen, the penguin. And of course our princess picked this up and said, what's these? That is a stick with a pink poop at the end of it. And then for a lot of their products, if you look at it and say, what is this? They've got screens to show you, look at how cool this shoe is. Mmm, cool shoe. All right, so we're back in the hotel from the supermarket. I am wearing the fancy pajamas of the hotel. Our princess thinks it is hilarious that I'm uh, not wearing yellow for once in a while. All right, and we solved the mystery of the third bed. And it was gray because it was like off limits is what that meant. We didn't pay for it. We only paid for beds for two people. And even though we have a child on the reservation, we didn't pay the bed fee. What's the bed fee? The bed fee is 5,000 yen for the reservation for them to make the bed. So I paid the 5,000 yen. And while we were out for dinner, they made this bed. Uh, but now we're gonna go to the hot spring, the hot spring hotel. This is why we stay in these places. You know, it costs, uh, well, what's the room cost? About $500 a night, but we're here on a weekend in April, cherry blossom season. So this is definitely high season here. Uh, and we hope to enjoy the relaxing hot spring water. We've already gained a year around the tree. I hope to gain another year from being in the hot spring. All right. Bye -bye. You ready to go to the hot spring bed? We're not wrapping up the video yet. We're gonna be back. So this isn't bye bye yet. You ready to go to the bath? Yeah. All right. So we just got back from the hot spring bath. How was the bath? Good. Good. Was it hot? Was it too hot? Yeah. Yeah, it was a little too hot for her. And actually, I when I stepped in, I was like, boy, this is hot. Uh, but you know, I'm a lobster, so I could probably stay in it for about 20 minutes, but she could only stay in for maybe two before she had to come in and out. Uh, it has a nice indoor area and a pretty good size outdoor area for how small this hotel is. There's only like 30 rooms about in this hotel. Um, and to my bath, I had it all to myself. The girls' bath, there were more girls in there as it typically is at hot spring hotels, I think. Oh, they do have a nice lounge right outside the bath that uh, afterwards you can get like popsicles, which was nice. So we had like a lemon and a grape popsicle. Uh, and but, a milk too. And a milk popsicle as well that we think, she thinks with milk, that I think it was maybe a fruit, uh, but that's okay. And I like the con of the hot spring, even though it's nice and outside, uh, there's no view. You just like look at plants and walls, but you're not inside, so that's cool. There is a hot spring pool uh, that I hope to check out before we leave this hotel. Well, good morning. We had a very good night's sleep and our three beds in the room. And now we are at breakfast. We booked breakfast with the room rate and it's a set Japanese breakfast here. You don't get to choose. They put a menu on the table, tell you what you're gonna eat. Traditional Japanese breakfast. We've got some miso soup, some rice, some seafood, like an egg and some soy sauce that's over here. It comes with a local juice of some sort, some tea. And then over here, there's some like fancy rice over on the fire that we cook afterwards. Looks like quite a feast. So we drove about 25 minutes from the hotel to the Izu Highlands to take this chairlift because we figured it was sunny today. And if you see what we see, it's not going anywhere. This chairlift on Mount Umuro goes up to some scenic hikes up this cool mountain uh, everybody else just seems to be standing around like we are hoping that they'll open again, but I guess due to the wind, they're not selling tickets right now. This is a little bit of the trip of Plan B's, so um, there's like a, 
a zoo or something cross street maybe we're gonna go look at and uh, but there was a neat like hotel for glamping up here too if you're into that it's glamping with a hot spring fancy checked out the zoo we were hoping to find a gift shop instead all we found was a ticket booth with some statues of animals admission is 2400 yen having just gone to the singapore zoo and the taipei zoo we're probably going to pass on little capybara zoo we are hoping though that there's a tour bus here that this is going to reopen later so i think we're going to go get lunch and then try to come back if it's not too windy i don't know when this thing runs because it doesn't even feel that windy so i don't know what the inclement weather is so on our way to lunch we saw this park that had all these cherry blossom trees in it and this on google maps is called sakura no sato but this park has um, a whole bunch of different varieties of cherry blossom trees that bloom from September through May. So if you come here in the winter to spring season, you can see a lot of cherry blossoms. Uh, and it also has neat views of the mountain just down below. I love the maps here in Japan, and this really points out where we are. This is the cartoonish looking mountain that we were gonna go up with the chairlift. This is Mount Fuji that we could see from the top of the mountain if we were able to go up there. And this is the thousand cherry blossom trees that are in this park with the parking lot. Free parking right across the street. After cherry blossoms, we drove seven minutes down the hill to the Izu Kogan Beer Main Branch. This is a two-story beer brewery and restaurant where they've got lots of beer, but we're also here for food. But I want to point out, when we came in, as is typical now in a lot of Japanese restaurants, they've got like iPads or tablets that you got to push a button, say you're here in a party, you get a number and then they call you when you're ready. And at the table, there's like copious amount of menus. And the way you order at this restaurant is all of these things have a number and they give you a tablet at your table and you just put the number into it. So it's pretty easy. We put the numbers for our beers into this tablet and one minute later, these showed up. 480 yen for one of their beers. Quite refreshing. Cheers. And this one is one of their beers with local orange juice in it. Orange juice is uh, popular in this region. Mm. Deliciously fruity. Tastes a little bit like a, maybe like a champagne and less of a beer. So the first lunch to arrive is the princess's lunch. We've got a kids hamburger curry set. This is kids curry rice, not spicy. This is hamburger meat and it's got a little Japan flag on it. And it comes with a mm, an pan man apple juice. Pretty tasty. Uh, Oxy Girl and I both got the same thing. We got their famous seafood rice bowl. 2,400 yen for lunch. Looks like quite a mountain of seafood. It comes with a onsen, uh, like an egg that's been soft boiled in onsen water. Some miso soup over here on the side. And uh, it comes with a spoon because I think spoons sometimes the best way to like actually eat this eat this thing. Mm. Good fresh fish, soft, delicious, and I think a really reasonable price in this place and pretty just chill, great place to eat. It's great that they have these seafood bowls for adults and kids' meals too. So I've finished the sashimi rice bowl and it was really good and for 20 US dollars, it's quite a bargain. Uh, you know, OC Girl uh, really enjoyed hers as well. She made it about halfway through and she remarked that after our fourth sashimi bowl in two days that she's probably not gonna eat, wanna eat sashimi for like the next few months. So something tells me we're probably having another one tomorrow <laughs> because that's what this region is famous for or maybe we'll just find curry, I don't know. But interesting like um, cultural thing about being in a brewery in Japan is if you just listen to the background, other than the music in the background and the little bowls going around, it's pretty quiet. I mean, compared to a brewery in the US, which would be loud and I would have to be talking significantly louder for you to hear me. Maybe it's the combination of like, sashimi and beer that just makes people more more chill oh no even after those mega fish bowls we've always got room for dessert and pudding is a specialty of this region frankly i feel like pudding is a specialty of every region in japan but there are so many pudding shops here there's one right next to the brewery izo kogen pudding in fact is the name and this is the basic pudding about a little over 300 yen their specialty for an extra 100 yen we get the special caramel pudding. They have like 10 different flavors of pudding and pudding ice cream here too. My favorite's definitely the one with the special caramel sauce. 
our daughter's favorite, strawberry. And they have a really funky pink cow that's on one side of the store and it goes outside the window too. After pudding, we hopped in the car for another short 10 minute drive to get here. Where is here? This is the Jogasaki Coast. It is a network of coastal hiking trails, but also some really cool volcanic formations. This area was actually formed by an eruption of Mount Amuro, the mountain that we couldn't get on earlier because it was too windy. Uh, and it's all like rocky and it's just kind of neat to ramble around these rocks. But what's really cool here is the suspension bridge. There's a suspension bridge that goes over Sea Cave. The waves crash right underneath it. It's really quite an adventure to cross. Free to cross, free to come in. You just have to pay to park at the parking lot. You'll definitely want to drive here as this place is pretty remote. There's also a lighthouse that you can go up in when it's open. It was closed when we were here. Uh, there's a little ice cream shop and a gift shop here as well. Uh, I think there's like nine to 10 kilometers of hiking trails, so you could easily make a good, I think, half day out of this destination if you're a nature and hiking lover. Though do be prepared for winds because it's, it's windy here too. It doesn't look like where I'm standing right now because I found a not windy spot to talk to you, but uh, out there on the bridge, really, I was getting uh, quite, quite wind blown. Our final activity before dinner was something fun for our princess and it was to visit a really awesome playground. This is the Dinosaur Plaza and to get here it is halfway up Kurumayama Mountain. Uh, it's about a 15-20 minute hike to get up here from the parking lot. There's tons of dinosaurs when you get up the hiking trail but then there's an amazing playground. Two sets of playgrounds but the best part of this park is definitely this roller slide. This is the longest roller slide I've ever seen. I go a little bit faster than she does because I'm heavier, so I gotta weigh myself down. This is probably about slide number 20 for our little princess. Did you enjoy this? Yeah. And the views from this park are really quite impressive too. But yeah, it still is quite, quite windy. For dinner, we decided to do something pretty simple, ramen. This place is called Ramen Izan. It's right on the waterfront in Ito, just a few minutes from our hotel. Uh, I got the standard tonkatsu ramen, gyoza, used to be pork instead of shrimp, and then a mini pork bowl. Our princess really wanted to eat some noodles today. So let's go ahead and dive into these. Woo, spoon casualty, thin noodles. Cook just perfection, a little bit chewy, but just the right level of chewy. Mm. And a good broth that's not too greasy, but nice and safe. All right, so it is the next day. The winds didn't calm down the first day, and we still really wanted to ride these chairlifts. And now we know they're operational because there is a massive line in front of this thing and tons of people on it. Uh, and so we're looking forward to going up as soon as we get to the front of this line. Adults are 700 yen to go up per person. And this sign lets you know dogs can go up too, but only small dogs, less than 45 centimeters tall and 15 kilograms in weight. I wonder if we're gonna see any doggies on the lift. So we bought our tickets. Now there's a second line to stand in. And by the way, the first line is getting really, really long now at 11 a.m. So if you wanna do this, come early. Uh, but there's a little shop that sells these manju right next to the line, 110 yen. I think people get hungry as they wait. It's got a machine that makes them. It's pretty neat, like it oils and batters and uh, Mm. Mm. It's filled with red bean. And yes, we did see a couple of small doggies head up on the lift. All right, we are on the chairlift now, and uh, it's pretty slow. It's a pretty slow chairlift, and even though it's probably only three feet from the ground, it's still, I feel like it's scarier than it seems for something being only three feet from the ground, probably for how like steep this mountain is. And uh, I think the scenic ride is going down, because looking up, I just I see grass. Looks pretty that way, but I can't turn around that way to really see it. My neck, I've yet to put in the 180 swivel. We got the little one here in the middle, nice and tight. And to show you really how close to the bottom this is, I'm six feet tall and I actually, I can touch the bottom right here. And as you get to the top, there's a little cute camera that says smile, a souvenir photo is being taken. All right, we made it to the top of Mount Omuro and the views up here, they really are truly fantastic. And by the way, we're not usually suckers for photos, but we did 
we did buy the photo here for 1200 yen. That's a pretty cute photo. And the voice that was coming out of it, I thought it was like a robotic recorded voice for every person coming up. There's actually a person on a microphone who says like, hey, we're gonna take your picture to every single person going up. But the real reason to come up here is to see Mount Fuji off in the distance, like the mountain that is super shy, you can almost never see on any day. Today, an amazing sunny day. And so we're so excited to see Mount Fuji. There's a little like roundabout hike that you take around this cartoon mountain. And it's funny to see on the ridge, all the people just walking in one direction to go that way. There's also a ice cream shop, a little snack shop, and some restrooms up here too. And then it looks like people do that round, they have their snack and then they head back down. So I think that's what we're gonna do. You ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. And this mountain is an old volcano. What's left in the crater? Well, now it's a archery field. This is a good place to shoot arrows. You don't have to worry about hitting anybody else. So this is an example of a perfect Japanese hike. They like to hike here, and there's some serious hikes like Mount Fuji, but I feel like a lot of the really popular ones, a lot of people hike are like this, where uh, it's perfectly paved, there's very clean bathrooms, there's snacks you can get, and it's not too long. This is a great example of um, why I like hiking in Japan too. I like to hike, but you know what? If I'm thirsty, I wanna get a drink, and when it's time for lunch, I wanna be done. Uh, but also up here, you can see the zoo that we didn't make it into last night with those like um, pyramids that are down there. Um, so I don't know, it looks kind of cool. And if you wonder what the why is today, it's not windy at the bottom, but it's quite windy up here. So I can understand why they closed this yesterday. They didn't, they didn't want anybody to get blown away. Woo! Going down, you get views of Mount Fuji the whole way. And yeah, it's definitely scarier on the way down because you can see just how steep this hill is. And there are no ways to hike up here. The chairlift is the only way. I think this was definitely the highlight of our trip to Ito and the Izu Highlands. If the weather's good, come up here. Uh, and if you want to stay right next to this, you can see those, uh, those glamping pods right down there. And if you got a little doggy, go ahead and bring it up. Because yes, we saw some little doggies at the top too. Well, what's for dessert today? Orange popsicles in the lounge after our second dip in the Onsen Hot Spring. Pretty relaxing. And you know, we were just looking at the keys at this hotel, and people think Japan is high tech, but it's also low tech at the same time. They're like actual keys. And they ask you when you go out of the hotel to return your key to the front desk so that that way they know you're gone, so that way they know to service your room. I, I feel like it's this honor system where you just come back and you say, room 515 and then they give you the key and I hope somebody else doesn't ask for my room key um, but we were just musing about these actual keys at this hotel but we've had a super great couple days in Ito and the Izu Peninsula if you are considering coming out here you know if you want to get like away from the hustle and bustle you want to get away from Tokyo you want to get away from the tourist crowds I think there's a great place to do it have some nature have some relaxing hot springs uh, just don't expect for like Amazing, amazing, same, same. Cheers. Same, same. Cheers. Amazing shopping, uh, amazing restaurants. I mean, they're good, and the seafood bowls are good. But don't expect for a lot of variety. Like, all the best restaurants are seafood bowls. And, uh, yeah, I think I, I think I can go. Mmm, thank you. I think I'm gonna stick to popsicles for a little bit instead of fish bowls. All right, well, fellow explorers, if you want to check out our previous vlog when we were in Atami for two days, you'll find that on the screen. And we're headed to the Fuji Five Lakes area next. As soon as that one's done, if you're subscribed, you'll see that too. Well, as usual, we won't say goodbye, because we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.